Hi guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got the G5 Metamorph. This is the new premier line of knives for real steel coming out. Uh, well, this guy's obviously coming out at the very end of 2017, but it's their new 2018 line. Soon they're going to get the uh, premier brother to this one, the S5. Well, I don't know exactly what soon means, but it's coming out. It's coming out you know, early 2018 is what I hear. Well, we'll see how long it takes for production. So uh, their new Metamorph is their, uh, on the website, they're calling it their flagship design. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, this G, the, the Metamorph. So G5 and then S5. And I can see why. Most of you guys who responded to my question on which knife you want to see first, you guys said that you wanted to see this knife. Makes complete sense to me. Really nice, light, strong gentleman's folder with a surprise. I found out something about this knife that none of the other reviewers that I saw know about this. Uh, other people that talk about it actually get it wrong, uh, like Knife News. Sorry, guys, you got it wrong. That brings me to an important point. If there's any reviewers watching this, stop watching other reviewers' videos. It's not a hard and fast thing. Until you have figured out your opinion of the knife, I'm suggesting don't read other people's reviewers of this knife. Don't watch other YouTube videos about that knife. Use it, test it, play with it, do all kinds of stuff with it. Take it apart. Find out, measure it, do all that stuff. Get your opinion rock solid, then find out what other people say. Maybe you overlook something. It's much better to make up your own mind first without the influence of anybody else before you hear what other people have to say. And that's because I see an awful lot of reviewers just repeating what they heard somewhere else. They, I don't believe they're doing it consciously. They're not doing it intentionally, but that's what's happening so often. So many reviews are just the same stuff over again. And another thing, don't trust what the manufacturer's website says about the knife. Most websites have measurements at least a little bit off. One of the exceptions is Real Steel. Their measurements are usually right on. And uh, on their website, they say this thing's got bearings. Stick around. I want to tell you something really cool about these bearings. This is a gentleman's folder if I ever saw one. This knife is ready, willing, and able for you to take with you on your lunch break and cut apart your apple. Let's move the camera up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So we can slice our apple. Just putting gentle pressure down. It broke a little bit at the end there. Oh, got right to the core, broke a little bit, but it slices very, very well. Wipe it off a little bit and let's try cutting some more things. Regular printer paper. You can even, you can even hear how well it cuts. And of course it can cut straight down on the edge. No problem at all. That's a straight push cut, not sliding it across the paper. Almost anybody can do this where you're sliding it across the paper. You know, that's easy to do. Going straight down is quite a bit harder takes a better edge to do that. Even more difficult is cutting uh, newspaper well. And it's trying to fold just a little bit. It cut in, but let's try it over here. 
it started because newspaper is so soft it likes to fold easy so it's cutting through a little over half the time it's cutting through oh, one more thing to try let's try some paracord there we go we've got like seven or eight layers of paracord and it just zips right through them all no problem so if you're looking for a knife that is super sharp and can cut through just about anything you put in front of it it's not a heavy duty knife this is a light use gentleman's folder that is rip roaring ready for you know anything in that kind of class of carry this is not a hard use knife it could handle it you've got sandvik 14c 28m steel you've got a fairly thick blade stock it looks thin because they got they're calling it a false edge i don't really like that term false edge because as you can see it's fairly narrow up here but up here it's nice and wide again getting close to that drop point it's nice and thick right there we've got a 7075 aluminum handle anodized you can get it in three different colors I'll show you a picture of that well, actually you saw those in the thumbnail but I'll show you a picture of those again this one's called golden rose very nice i do have a tiny little bit of a flaw already and i'll show you a close-up of that right there there's a tiny little chip actually there's two there's another one just a little bit to the right of it not sure how that happened but it's there nice anodization overall though i really like it and then you've got all this kind of contouring here it the shape of this thing is just awesome the designer is uh, a Polish guy named, uh, I'll probably butcher his name, Ostap Hell. Uh, his name is right there on the blade. It's a front flipper. And I'm terrible at opening front flippers. You know, I can do it with my thumb sometimes. And I was speaking with Ostap and he was showing me on the uh, a G3 that he has. And he's he opens it this way. His finger goes on top and he opens it that way while holding it just with one hand I certainly can't do it with this knife and I don't have the uh, front flipper g3 version so uh, I can't do that I think it was a g3 whatever knife it is and then there's other knives where some guys do it across with their finger uh, I watched a guy doing that today on some knives that are front flippers so there's several different ways to open front flippers and I'm basically uh, one of these guys that I use the side of my thumb while I'm holding it and just use the side of my thumb to open it. It's really awkward to do sitting down in this tight space, but that's how I do it all in one motion. Very cool knife. We've got a nice deep, not a deep pocket clip, sorry. We've got a nice pocket clip right side, but there are some things I want to talk about that pocket clip to you as well. We've got a really cool lanyard. I just touched that edge on my hand here and I felt like I cut myself. And maybe there is a there it is tiny little cut right there just from resting the blade on my hand for a second she is sharp i sharpened it in my ts prof k02 sharpening system <laughs> very nice okay let's close this up there we go now let's show you this lanyard hole option it's sort of like a uh, scooped out section they put there and a pin in between and so you just push your paracord you probably want to uh melt the end first but i don't have one handy right now and you just sort of pull it through hopefully it's focused there you go and then your lanyards through there and then you tie it up however you want to tie it I don't want a lanyard on here, so I'm taking it back out. And that's your common seven strand paracord. We've got uh, Real Steel's logo right there in the pocket clip. RSK, Real Steel knives. And the only other writing they have is on the blade. This is Re Real Steel right there with their R for registered trademark. And then on the other side, I've already shown you that. And then there it says 14C28N. This is one of the big 
great things about real steel is they don't flood your blade with all kinds of writing all over it. That's one of the things I hate about Ganzo. I really like Ganzo overall. It's really cheap budget knives that are half decent quality. Now, real steel is a fair bit better quality than Ganzo. And uh, so they go the extra step, extra couple steps compared to Ganzo, actually. And so you've got this nice writing on there, but it's nice and small, not overwhelming. I hate that in-your-face stuff all over knives. And so that's really nice. We've got a satin finish on the blade. It's a full flat grind. We've got a nice long section for jimping. And then we've got this little spot right there where my thumbnail is. And what's that called? That's called a digit stop. This is a digit. And you put your finger when you're cutting, so I'm doing some delicate cutting, right there. And it just gives you that tiny little bit of extra purchase, that little bit of assurance that you're holding your knife just right. And it's really, it works. It's actually functional. So that's kind of cool. And the jimping over here is a really good jimping. It's not too aggressive. It's just enough to help you out without, you know, being annoying. We've got a nice backspacer here that goes all the way to the end. And so they've got a little bit lightening of it, little cutouts there to, you can see the light coming through there just to help give it some character. It's sort of rounded across the top, whereas the edge of the handle here is flat. So a little bit rounding, just something to feel a little bit more comfortable in your hand. And it's very comfortable right or left-handed. It's absolutely super comfortable. And the end being, uh, you know, this kind of bullet shape on the end, very comfortable. Um, you know, you can hold the knife any way you want. This is not a tactical knife. Although, you know, if you got into your a life and death situation, I'd rather have this knife than a whole lot of others, that's for sure. But uh, that's not what it's for. Uh, my wife looked at it and said, wow, that's the sharpest letter opener I've ever seen. <laughs> sure, you can open letters with it, and but that's not what it's for either, at least not primarily. Really nice little EDC kind of knife. And it's little in shape, not in shape, it's little in size, not in size. It's little in weight and uh, depth of blade, but you've got a nice long blade and a strong blade. Let's do all these sizes for you now before I get too distracted with some other stuff. See, I can't flip it when I get just right. So let's zoom in and do some sizes here. Okay, cutting edge, 8.42 centimeters, that's 3.32 inches. Blade length, so end of the handle to the tip of the blade, 9.02 centimeters, 3.55 inches. The blade thickness, 3.05 millimeters, that's 0.12 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, no surprise here, 0.39 millimeters, really nice and thin behind the edge. That's 0 0.0155 inches. So this steel can certainly handle being that thin at the edge. It's you know just shy of 0.4, and 0.5 is what I think the average budget steel should be. But this is not your average budget steel. This is a mid-grade steel, and it certainly is a great steel for this knife. And the thickness, thinness here is why it slices so very, very easily. Um, and, you know, the tip here makes it very, very uh, puncture, um, I was almost going to say puncture proof, but that's not what it is. Things that are puncture proof are not going to be puncture proof when you get this thing at them. <laughs> uh, it's, it's you know, a very stabby knife, if you will. <laughs> um, we're still talking about specs. Let's do smart. Handle. Handle length. 11.67 centimeters, that's 4.59 inches. The uh, grip area, and for the grip area, I'm talking about this flat area back here between my thumbnails, that's 9.96 centimeters. So basically 10 centimeters, 3.92 inches. So 10 centimeters, four inches, roughly. The uh, handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.13 centimeters, that's 0.446, so not quite half an inch thick this way. And uh, the handle depth this way is just a bit under two centimeters on average, 1.9 I'm saying, right around three quarters of an inch thick this way on average, or I'm calling that the depth. 
The total length of this knife with the blade deployed is 20.65 centimeters. That's 8.13 inches. And so you've got a knife over 8 inches, and it weighs 2.65 ounces. 75 grams. 75 grams for this knife. In large part because they did a great job with this full flat grind. So that took some weight off the steel. And then they put this false edge here. And that took off a little bit more weight. And then they used aluminum for the handle. And they used 775 aluminum. 7075. This is a high grade aluminum. Uh, some people who are, who know metallurgy say it's almost as tough as a steel. Uh, it's a really, really good aluminum choice. Uh, better than 6065. I'll give, tell you that all day long. It's a really good choice. I'm really glad that they went with that. And then you've got this uh, small bit of liner on this side here, and that's for the uh, liner lock. It doesn't add a lot of weight at all. So let's take a good look at this liner lock. We've got really nice jipping on there, so it's easy to disengage when you want to. Uh, lock up is rock solid. There's no blade play back and forth, up and down, nothing at all. It locks up a tiny bit later than I like a brand new knife to be, but not bad at all. Uh, blade alignment is perfect when it's closed. No problems there. The regular fit and finish, awesome. I'm a little bit sad about that tiny little chip there, but I think that's probably my own fault. I think there was one point at which I had two knives in my hand and I grabbed them and I had to go downstairs and I think I rubbed another knife handle against there. And so that would be my own fault. Can't blame the knife on that because that's not its intended use at all <laughs> or the best way to carry it. Okay, you've been waiting long enough, right? Here's the big surprise. This knife is $74.95 US all day long. That's retail. You might be able to find it some other places. You can get it directly from Real Steel Knives on their website. Uh, that's where I got it from. I did get a bit of a discount because I'm a reviewer. I looked at it and it said in the video, in the description that this thing's got bearings. After I got everything ready, I'm going, wow, this is a great knife. And after I knew what I know, I looked around to see if anybody else knew what I know. And you'll know soon. Be patient. And yeah, they're saying, yeah, it's got ball bearings. You know, nice knife. Uh, but Real Steel Knives does not say that it has ball bearings. It just says it has bearings. I like to take my knives apart and show you. So here, let me take this apart. I'll show you the pictures of the inside. Roller bearings. They put roller bearings in this knife. I am very surprised because even the Eclipse, the the, the uh, Megalodon Eclipse, that thing's only got ball bearings. I was so surprised when I opened this up and it's got roller bearings. So what are the big things that I like and dislike about this knife? Uh, let's talk about the positives again. I really love the roller bearings. I love this blade shape and its design. I really like the handle shape and its design. The materials for both the blade and the handle, perfect. And uh, the fit and finish is, you know, done to the nines. It's really good. The thinness behind the grind, beautiful. It's very light. Action on it is great. It flips really good. Everything's nice and tight, built very well. That digit stop is actually useful and it looks good too. It's you know really nice there. It just fits in the hand really, really well that way. So, uh, and the forward flipper, that's really cool. I love this forward flipper. I can actually flip it. You know, I'm not too good at it with other ones. And I grew up left-handed, but I can't do the flipper thing with my left hand yet. I try, but you know, the knife wants to come flying out of my hand. <laughs> uh, what don't I like about this knife? Well, it's not too big of a deal, but I'll tell you something. This is a gentleman's folder. So if you're going to wear it with your blue jeans, you're going to find that it's not always going to fit very nice in your pocket. This pair of jeans, it fits. These are a little bit thinner here than some. I've got some blue jeans where this is too thick. It's sewn too thick for this to want to go on very well. This pair is really good. So there's a lot of pairs that it's going to work with. But there's some pairs of blue jeans that it might not work with that well. But your business attire, beautiful. Every single time it's going to slide onto your slacks, no problem. 
you've got about a centimeter, a little over a centimeter sticking out. It's a little over half of an inch sticking out of your pocket. No big deal. Um, you, know, you can match it up with whatever pants you're wearing because it comes in those three colors, the gray, the blue, and this rose, this golden rose. Uh, what else am I not terribly fond of about this knife? Absolutely nothing. It's just this pocket clip. I wish it was uh, on both sides. I can see why it isn't on the other side, but since I grew up left-handed and there's enough left-handed guys out there, they really would like a left-handed option. Um, I should say the detent on this is awesome. It's a very good detent. Uh, this knife is not going to open accidentally in your pocket. So if you're left-handed and you put this in your left pocket, you know, this show side sticking out, there's nothing to grab it. There's no flipper tab or anything to grab onto it and stuff. I won't guarantee it, but I can almost guarantee it that this is not going to open up on you in your pocket. And then since it is a forward flipper, uh, you left-handed guys have just as easy of a time opening this as right-handed guys do. It's ambidextrous in that regard. It's just that the pocket clip is not. But with this good detent, I don't think that's a concern. Don't let that stop you from buying this knife. Seriously, don't let the fact that this pocket clip is on one side only deter from doing that. Now, I would like a flip over a pocket clip, one that, you know, you screw in and it comes up and over and back. That would carry it a little bit deeper. I would really like that. Very nice knife. I don't have anything else negative to say. I love this thing all day long. I will never be selling this knife unless I get into a life situation where I am super desperate for money. Um, get your own. <laughs> don't make an offer on mine. Um, if you want to buy one and send it to me for me to sharpen up for you, I'll do that because I'm starting to get into the sharpening uh, business. Not really business. I'm just doing it for a few people now. We'll see how it goes. But if you'd like me to sharpen your knives, I can do that for you. This is an excellent knife. A great Christmas gift for yourself. Uh, Canadian dollars right now. Uh, this is seventy four fifty US. Uh, I checked today in Canadian dollars. That's ninety five seventy five. So you're talking a hundred dollar knife almost. Well, with shipping and stuff, it's a hundred Canadian pesos. And um, I know the other day I was saying shekels, wasn't I? I do have a Mexican background, by the way. Hundred Canadian pesos, almost ninety five. And you can have this awesome knife. I know not all of you can afford that. Many of you cannot afford that. Uh, one of the reasons you love my channel is because I do a lot of budget knives. Well, tomorrow I will be reviewing a Ganzo, and that will be a uh, more of a budget knife indeed. But for now, wow, this is an awesome knife. This knife should be selling at Real Steel for ninety-five fifty. Seriously, it shouldn't be selling for seventy-four fifty. It should be selling for like for ninety four fifty, ninety five fifty, just a little bit under a hundred U.S. dollars. You guys at Real Steel, you would make money hand over fist if this thing was just under a hundred dollars. I think you uh, were too generous on the price point for this thing. Um, you know, I'm not suggesting you up the price, but this thing would survive and thrive in the market at a higher price, guaranteed. Awesome knife. So since they did put this on for seventy four fifty, guys, you need to jump at it. Pick the color that you like the best or buy one of each. <laughs> Borrow some money from your uh, neighbor. Do what you can to get one of these if you are at all finding it attractive. Very, very nice knife. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing. And if you find links for this anywhere on Amazon, please let me know so that I can post it there. And that way I can give you referral links and, um, you know, the, the prices might be a little bit better. They're just coming out right now. I got this sent to me the day after they got it in the, uh, the distribution center for real steel. So this is a very new review. Love this thing. Till next time. Remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.